Sheriff Ken Peterson's mentor, retired Sheriff Tom Kucerich. Now, we didn't talk about that. This guy, this, this reporter is saying that Ken Peterson's mentor was Tom Kucerich. And, of course, we went over Kucerich in the Penny Bernstein case in 85, which was a, just a pretty obvious frame-up job, I think, to anybody who looks at the evidence. So it's, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. So Sheriff Tom Kucerik, retired, was being accused of framing Avery for a beachfront rape that had cost Avery 18 years of freedom. Wisconsin's extensive review of court transcripts and the investigative case file combined by the Calumet County Sheriff's Department shows that Manitowoc County played a major role in gathering evidence at the Avery Salvage Yard despite the lawsuit. That potential conflict of interest is a theme that has emerged in the wake of the Netflix docuseries that has drawn wide interest and has brought heavy criticism on Manitowoc County investigators from those who question the validity of the convictions of Avery and his nephew, Brendan Dassey, in the killing of Teresa Hallback. On July 29, 1985, Peterson, working on the investigation into the rape of Penny Bernstein, entered Avery's residence and stated, You're under arrest for suspicion of attempted murder records show. Besides Peterson, another Manitowoc County deputy who converged on Avery's residence to carry out what proved to be a wrongful arrest was Deputy Mike Bushman. Now, Mike Bushman is someone we haven't mentioned yet, but let's look at some more strangeness and conflict of interest. So, forward 20 years, the missing persons investigation surrounding Hallback was in danger of reaching an impasse. Or an impasse? Are we speaking French or English here? <laughs> Bushman, who had retired earlier that year and was now considered a part-time reserve deputy, showed up at the police command center on the morning of November 7, 2005, eager to prove Avery killed the missing freelance photographer from the Hilbert area. And that's what's funny about this whole case. They're not looking for truth. They're looking to prove that Avery did it, even if they think they did. That's like their sole objective, and they don't even investigate other subjects of which, uh, other suspects, of which there are many, and we'll be addressing them as well. Even though there was no shortage of police officers from other agencies, agencies not connected to the Avery lawsuit, at Avery Salvage Yard that day, that didn't deter Manitowoc County from sending a large contingent of its own deputies. So let's examine them. So Lieutenant Detective Lank came in at 7.15 a.m., Sergeant Andrew Colburn came in at 7.16 a.m. Detective Dennis Jacob, 7.16. Bushman, 7.38. Todd Herman, 7.38. Jason Jost, 7.45. David Sider, 7.45. And Scott Senglob, 7.54. Bushman agreed to lead a four-member evidence search party consisting of fellow Manitowoc County Sheriff's officials. It wasn't long before Bushman's team made a fortuitous discovery as they canvassed the northern edge of the Avery salvage yard near an open cornfield. I came across a burning barrel which was in my section of searching, Siders would testify. It was Stephen Avery's burn barrel, not far from his trailer. Siders put his hands into the burn barrel and he removed a heavy metal tire rim. I saw a lot of ashes and I saw a lot of burnt, melted plastic parts, Siders would testify. It appeared to be parts of a cell phone that were actually melted inside the burning barrel. Remnants of a Motorola emblem for a cell phone and debris from a camera were identified. Authorities believed that charred debris was Hallback's camera and cell phone. Manitowoc County Sheriff's deputies identified this burn barrel near Stephen Avery's trailer. It contained remnants of a charred phone and a camera determined to belong to Teresa Hallback. Hallback. Despite the burn barrel's mid-morning recovery, Manitowoc County Sheriff's deputies would steer clear of inspecting Avery's burn pit area, which was roughly 20 yards from his bedroom window. Around 4.35 p.m., the sun went down. Another full day had passed without any discovery of Hallback. The next day, Tuesday, November 8th, Avery Road was again swarming with police, Wisconsin State Patrol, Calumet County Sheriff's Office, Wisconsin Division of Criminal Investigation, Two Rivers Police Department, Kaukauana Police Department. The Manitowoc County Sheriff's Office continued to play a role. At least a dozen sheriff's officials came out to the property that day. Logs reflect. The, here's the other weird thing. Like, a lot of these blind 
Avery is guilty people are saying, oh, well, there was no way anybody could have planted evidence. Like, okay, fine, you don't think they planted evidence, but how can anybody make any kind of rational argument that they didn't have the opportunity to plant evidence? There were dozens of them there, not to mention hundreds of other people, which, as you've pointed out, the evidence might have been planted not by the police. But can we say for a fact that the police had the opportunity to plant the evidence? If Man Manitowoc Sheriff's Department, they had the opportunity. Yeah, of course. Yeah. What do you think, Maxwell? I agree. So real quick, when you said that they were searching the property, that was the 7th? That yeah. was the first day? Th that's the first day that they're addressing the logs in this particular article. Okay, because they were on the yes. property searching, and before. they didn't see all that Prior. stuff before. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Avery actually let them search. Mm -hmm. The mark of a guilty man allowing the police into your house without a search warrant. <laughs> 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 oh man wait they they allowed to avery allowed them to search without a warrant initially when they came to first <sighs> man, multiple times up. they didn't multiple find anything times. on the first time either or second or so third. he just like just having his coffee oh come on in pretty much yeah just like that huh <laughs> <laughs> pretty much <laughs> Maxwell, you're gonna address. Yeah, I, gotta start, I gotta start watching. Maxwell, you're gonna address any of your marriage proposals in in the, uh, in the, oh, in the YouTube dude. comment section. Come on, man. I, what's I'd going probably on? take her up on that, man. Oh man, <laughs> uh, send the photos too. <laughs> well, she says she wants to play with you, right? Oh <laughs> my god, Maxwell's uh, a playful guy. Oh, <laughs> okay, right. so I have a mask, chains, and whips. Oh no. The Manitowoc County Sheriff's Office continued to play a role. At least a dozen sheriff's officials came out to the Avery property that day, logs reflect. Among them, Deputy Inspector Greg Shetter at 6.40 a.m. and Sergeant Jason Orth at 6.55 a.m. Lank and Coburn checked in together at 7.20. Those chums. Little butt buddies. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? I missed it. What? <laughs> Lank and Coburn checked in together at 7.20 a.m. They seem to be very chummy. <laughs> Must have nothing to do with that phone call about, Greg Al about Gregory Allen. Wait, who are, you, who are these guys again? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Avery's dad, his name is Allen. Lank. You know that, right? Wait, Avery's Lank. dad's yeah. name is Allen. Okay. Yeah, Allen, Avery, yeah. And who's, uh, yeah, and then Arland is the other one, yeah. And then I think there's a Chuck. Yeah, there and, is. And uh, Earl. Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> these, these names are... Okay, three, remnants of cell phone digital camera found November 7th, 2005, recovered by Manitowoc County. Key personnel, Deputy David Siders, retired Deputy Inspector Mike Bushman, come, coming out of retirement to frame up Avery. <laughs> Loose ends need to be handled. <laughs> coming out of retirement. <laughs> Wait, who, who came out of retirement? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who? Mike Bushman. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you know exactly who that is. I have no idea who is. He's the retired deputy who helped arrest Avery in 1985 for the uh, Penny Bernstein yeah. rape. He came out of retirement <laughs> for this 2005 case against Avery. <laughs> uh, the you know, frame up jobs are a full time job. Like he had to retire. <laughs> like that frame up was just so exhausting. <laughs> then when Avery got out, he had to come out of retirement to finish the job that he started. Probably got a bonus for it too. <laughs> So he led search group A, consisting of the four Manitowoc County Sheriff's deputies. It wasn't long before Siders came upon a burn barrel belonging to Stephen Avery. He removed a tire rim. Remnants of a charred cell phone and camera debris were collected and used as evidence to convict Avery. Okay. Five. The spare ignition key for Hallback's RAV4 found November 8, 2005. The fourth continuous day of Manitowoc County's presence at Avery Salvage. Key personnel, the Detective Lieutenant James Lank. Sergeant Andrew Coburn. Sound familiar, Maxwell? Do, these, do any of these names sound familiar uh, now? Yeah. No? Starting to. <laughs> Maxwell Army. Starting. <laughs> Calumet County Deputy Dan Kucharski. Circumstances. As Kucharski was sitting on Avery's bed. <laughs> <laughs> always, always sitting on Kucharski. Oh. That's Calumet County, the so-called supervisor. At the <laughs> Lank spotted a spare key on the floor near Avery's bed. I believe I said to myself, damn, how did I miss that? Coburn would testify. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. How did I miss that? Oh, man. Oh, man. It was just, it was just right on the floor. 
should just laugh for the rest of the podcast. Oh man, oh man, I got tears. Uh, oh, that's shit. rough. Because uh. <laughs> Lank threw it there. Okay, oh, <laughs> three days earlier, Lank, Coburn, and Remaker searched the room for two and a half hours in front of Sergeant Bill Tyson, and the key wasn't seen. But uh, the spare key was found to contain Avery's DNA, but not Hallback's DNA. Hallback's regular set of keys was never found. Now, how people don't find this suspicious is mind-boggling. So they mind still did it. So Avery is this the greatest genius in the history of crime. So he gets rid of her regular keys, but he leaves her spare key in his bedroom. And, and then you rub his finger on it. Wait, what? 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 And you rub this finger on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So he, yeah. this guy is such a genius that he can bleach a garage and then put the dust and grime back on top to simulate perfectly the look of years and years of dust and grime. But he leaves his fingerprints on a spare key in his bedroom while mastermindingly getting rid of the regular set of keys. And then he plants the car on his property a few days after. Yeah. yeah. And then he just covers up with a couple of branch. He just covers it up with a couple of branches, hoping nobody would see. <laughs> <laughs> And then he folds up the license plate and throws it in another car. <laughs> yeah, this is oh, the funniest man. one. <laughs> I don't get it. How could he be this much of a genius? He must have a split personality between the smartest person in the world and the stupidest person in the world. Because that's the only way to explain it. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> if he did it. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> And he doesn't even bother cleaning. He doesn't even bother cleaning up the blood in the Rav Four, and then just covers it up with a couple of branches. <laughs> Wait, are you, were you serious about the couple of branches? Oh, you yeah. didn't see a picture, uh, Johnny? <laughs> show, him, show him a picture of the vehicle. Well, yeah, I thought you were kind of like kidding. no, oh, no, no. That's, that's, why, just <laughs> that's why everything's funny because it's true. <laughs> oh shit! I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Why? What? Why? What, why? Branches? Because <laughs> he's a genius. Because he's a criminal mastermind genius. That's why. Now, in this car, in the, where this car was, was there a tree or what, what the hell? I mean, it, it was on the edge of like. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, nobody will ever find that. Oh, okay. <laughs> nobody will ever find that. Oh man. Oh, so that's what it. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> this guy's a genius. Making a genius. That's what it should be called. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but just quick point again on that. That's the the it's the spare key. So that would probably be at her house, right? So yeah. let's say so let's say you're Hilligus or one of these other guys. Oh, and man. another interesting point. I was going to get into this later in the Teresa Hallback episodes, but she never says she loves her brother in the video she made. Like if I die tomorrow, she family. said she, all, family. she mentions everybody. Like she loves her sis. Like she mentions everybody except her brother. Oh man! Just uh, why, I don't know. Why is that? Um, well, nobody knows. Okay. Nobody knows the relationship with the brother. So let's say some people think her brother killed her. And Wait, she it. specifically said. I know she said my my family, but she said my she, parents, my, my sister. sister yeah. and she left out the brother. Correct. Oh crap! There was no specific oh, mention. That's interesting. So oh, she yeah, specifically mentioned it. other. So she might have included him with family, but she went out of her way to mention everybody to else. Leave him out. But yeah. uh, that video was made two years prior, right, or something like that. I'm not too I sure. It's probably around that time though, like two years before maybe. Yeah, we'll get into all the Teresa Hallback stuff later. But if, for example, Hillegas, who, if they knew where her spare key was, or they found it, or her roommate, if her spare key was there. He saw her the day her, before, supposedly. Yeah, her roommate, well, also the roommate, Blodorn. Yeah. Scott Blodorn. I mean, uh, Maxwell knows who he is, right? I don't know. I don't know who I think I it's know Bladorn. Is. They they pronounce it Bladorn. Bladorn? Yeah, it's like a weird spelling. It's B L O E, right? Or yeah. is it not? Or is it E O? I think I it's O E. So then it should be Blowdorn. Everybody on there is Blowhorn. <laughs> Blowhard Blowdorn. <laughs> so if he took her spare key and they planted the vehicle. That'd be the only place you could get it from. Because he got her planner anyway. And then he's already got her. Then, uh, and then the, we'll get into this in a future episode. But another interesting thing about Hillegas, he says on the stand, you know, we guessed her password and then we just found a username that worked. So they didn't know her username. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know the username or the password. Yeah. But they deciphered the password, and then they just somehow made a magic username. I yeah. don't know. Whatever. The, wait, the real. Uh, so she lived with Scott Bladorn, right? Bladorn. <laughs> <Blodorn. laughs> um, she went missing on the thirty-first. 
but they never reported it. Right. And then Scott and uh, the parents Ryan Hilligus yeah. are like kind of like friends too. They talk to each other, and he didn't mention anything. Like, where's she at? I don't know. And so if the mom they, called it in. If they dumped the car there, they, then they just chucked the spare key in Avery's bedroom because they didn't have the real set of keys. Because hmm. whoever really killed her would have the real set of keys. Unless, of course, it was Avery, and he did dispose of the keys, and then they were framing him, even though they thought he was innocent. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many keys are on that property, though, with all those cars. Yeah, it's crazy. Hmm. It's pretty crazy. Okay, so six human bones at Avery Burn Pit found November 8, 2005. Key personnel, Sergeant Jason Jost of the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Office, Calumet County Lieutenant Kelly Sippel, Wisconsin DCI Investigator Tom Sturdivant. Circumstances. Mid-afternoon, Jost alerted Sippel to his discovery of human bones in the burn pit not far from Avery's red garage and trailer. Sergeant Jost indicated to me there had been a large burned area behind the red garage on the Avery property located in the northwest corner of the property. He felt that this area may not have gotten searched properly based on the fact that there was a large German shepherd in the immediate area, Sippel stated. <laughs> Jost and others would take no photos showing the locations of where the bones later identified as Hallback were located. 7. Human bones in burn barrel on Barb Janda's property. So November 6, 2005, the second consecutive Day of Manitowoc County's presence at Avery Salvage. Key personnel, Calumet County's Dan Kucharski, Manitowoc County's Remaker, Lank, and Coburn. Do those guys sound familiar yet? Yeah. Yeah. Maxwell? Maxwell? <laughs> Maxwell? Maxwell? Nothing? Okay. <laughs> the four seized control of four separate burn barrels located on the property. Maxwell Army. It was later revealed that both animal parts and human bones had been discarded into one of these barrels, which was on the property of Bard Janda and her sons. Animal parts and human bones. Here's another crazy theory. If all these people are a bunch of serial killers and they killed other people, but they didn't kill Teresa Holbeck, <laughs> how messed up would that be? <laughs> Yeah, that would be so <laughs> <laughs> insane, right? Yeah. <laughs> Cuz they <laughs> Oh man. Circumstances. Avery's lawyers Dean Strang and Jerry Buting argued that the discovery of human bones in the 55-gallon burn barrel on Stephen Avery's sister's property about 100 feet away from Avery's trailer contradicted the prosecutor's theory that Avery burned Hallback's dead body in the burn pit outside his bedroom window. If Mr. Avery wanted to get rid of the bones from his burn area, he would not put a scattered few in someone else's burn barrel and leave all the rest behind. <laughs> 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 Strang argued, that's not making sense. It doesn't make sense. No one would do that. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> making a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Max, what, what do you think of that? What I miss. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Oh, you weren't here. What I, what I miss. Okay, <laughs> so here's the thing. So... Uh, but, so human and animal bones were also discovered on Stephen Avery's sister's property, Barb Janda, 150 feet away from Avery's trailer. Okay. So Avery's lawyer, Strang, said, if Mr. Avery wanted to get rid of the bones from his burn area, he would not put a scattered few in someone else's burn barrel and leave all the rest behind. <laughs> <laughs> Incriminating himself. <laughs> That's not making sense. It doesn't make sense. No one would do that. <laughs> so let's leave some of these human animal. remains on my. But let me sprinkle a few over there too. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. By the way, that's how the key was found. Oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. oh and we forgot yeah, to I say. I so one. basic, basic DNA. Like human dust is mostly human skin, skin cells, cells. Yeah. yeah so if those dirty sweaty slippers that the key was found by like someone just drops the key on the slippers it'll yeah. have avery's dna on it yeah yeah so like it didn't uh. even need to be planted with it some people theorize that lank and coburn they were planting the key not the dna so the when they say oh it had his dna on it they were surprised because they don't really know how dna works so it's kind of just like a, sp a pleasant surprise oh that's even more damning so like we can definitely get him now huh yeah, that key had to have been at our house. So where any, she stayed. Any thoughts on the burn barrels on Barb Janda's property? Or or is oh uh, here's another theory. Stephen Avery did it, and he wants to take all these people down with him for some reason. So he wants to martyr. So let's say he's completely insane. He wants to martyr himself by painting himself as innocent when he actually did do it, and then he's sprinkling bones on other people's property, and he wants to implicate his other family members. Obviously, yeah. highly unlikely, but I'm just just going yeah, with every yeah, single possible going, theory. Going, yeah. Like, how do you make sense of him leaving the bones in his own burn barrel <laughs> and then also putting them on his sister's property? Does that make any sense? 
Yeah. <laughs> like, um, was it uh, someone commented? Uh, like, is one of his lawyer is, um, saying that one of his family members did it? Is that is that Zellner? True? Yeah. Uh, that true, she pointed right? the finger at a couple different people, but that was one of the theories. Yeah. Huh. Uh, Johnny, you want to chime in on that? Yeah, I guess one of them would be Bobby Dassey, Brendan's huh. brother, because he had his computer all searched and stuff. We and went over this before, Maxwell. Uh, <laughs> Maxwell Army. And in the original case, I think they, they just labeled it as Brendan's hard drive when it wasn't. It was actually Bobby used it most of the time. Very strange circumstances. Well, no, I'm only going to address this one point okay, about the okay. garage, and I actually I hadn't really thought about it. So here's the thing, and from the court transcripts, you can see there's deer spec DNA, uh-huh. but there's also dust and grime all over that garage. So... They bleach the garage, criminal masterminds they are, <laughs> and then to just prove how genius they are, they did what no criminals have ever done before. They put all of the dust and grime back on top in the garage, perfectly simulating countless years of accumulation. Oh, wow. I mean, these guys are like the best criminals <laughs> ever. Not to mention, they're that brilliant at bleaching a crime scene, and then they just leave all of the DNA in Hallback's car. And then the other problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just that little little tiny bit. <laughs> or do they have a split personality where they're, like, completely mentally disabled? Or cr- the greatest criminal mastermind geniuses in the history of the world? That's Brendan Dassey and uh, Stephen Avery. Yeah. Because yeah, they know. seem to oscillate back and forth, and the, and the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department's case seems to rest on the <laughs> fact that they can oscillate between – leaving all the DNA in the vehicle and doing the best cleanup job in the history of the world in the garage and then putting all of the dust and grime back on top. <laughs> and then have bones on this property and then bones on all other people's property. We're not gonna even we're not even going with the bones, but uh like uh, Earl Avery actually brought that up first in those in similar words. I'm like okay. Yeah, that's pretty hilarious. Mm-hmm. Why was this not brought up in the trial that like they did the best bleach job in the history of the world and then they put all of the dust and grime back and then sprinkled some old deer DNA from like years ago as well just to kind of simulate. Wasn't there also the a crack in the garage so like blood could like seep down and below? Yeah. So it would be impossible to clean that up? Yeah. So they yeah. like jackhammered it out and they tested it and they didn't find anything.